Observing the smallest rainstorm from a small little rainstorm of 15 minutes turning into a drizzle sprinkle and then waiting a moment and heading down to the river and actually watching the river jump up in all the river went up to 200 CFS and then catching a little bit of activity of debris and material getting transported moving up the higher watershed to see if we can get a glimpse of in migrating Chinook salmon making it over these structures but as the flows receded having the opportunity to find a giant 38 inch Chinook buck salmon at the downtown areas at the sap pavilion tracking how many fish come in by counting the bodies and the carcasses looking from bridges as early as June from uh, West St. John Street as the structures grew taken down numerous times but still observing much more activity uh, garbage cans being used for bathing and other materials even moving water to their campsites and actually excavating the channel and then observing as many as 12 additional structures Three, four, five structures have been reconfigured in, in the river channel here. The activity was overwhelming every bridge in the downtown areas of a park system. As the structures grew as early as July and June and seeing the concrete being stacked and even getting very elaborate even to seal the structures with plastic anoleum and uh, you could see this is actually weighed down and going in and taking it down but observe the smallest little structure can divert water around the structure the most damaging of all is damaging a rearing area where the flows move over the gravels at the right velocities and backing up the water as much as 12 inches. Observing how small barrier structures back up water and make water go around these structures. After removing all the foreign concrete that was used for this crossing, observing how much material was laid on top of the cobbled rocks that were needed for spawning Chinook salmon utilizing this nesting area. The importance of getting the water to flow over the gravels again so the viability of a nesting area can be utilized. Observing spawning salmon and this is in lower areas down of Coleman Avenue in 2013. Moving up the river system and finding many more structures blocking and stopping the fish from migrating upstream. This one is at Virginia Street and after a little work taking measurements and then looking exactly at the river channel on where this has been constructed I could see that this was on top of clay layer and the clay was uh, exposed and punching a hole so it won't trap the fish and moving the materials out of the river and up along the banks the foreign concrete obstacles monitoring the river system and looking during the July time frame further upstream underneath the freeway exchanges where the population grows you could see this river crossing which was six to eight feet in width during July and almost four feet in height and uh, as it evolved they turned from barrier crossings to trapping pulching areas as you could see this has been turned into 
you could see the equipment like shovels being left behind and then it turned in from one structure to five structures. These are used to actually poach and trap salmon. So what happens during small storms as salmon and other fish are enticed to move upstream? The effects of these structures could back up the water like this one backed up the water almost 340 yards upstream. Looking at how it looks in between storms, how easily fish could be trapped in between each of the structures. The importance of strategically positioning the material so as the flows drop, it will help with incoming Chinook salmon moving through the areas. Once taking some of the material out, we observed the flows drop down behind the pond at least 12 inches. Again, these were all underwater. Human intervention to alleviate the effects of the take of an endangered animal, volunteers went in and took down as much as they could. Overviewing the area, looking up and panning up to the area to see how the water flows. From this vantage point, you could see there's been a lot of material introduced and strategically positioned while our group went in and punched holes in it and made the water move more fluently. Unfortunately, looking at the gauging information below the Alamitos fish ladder, the uh, flows were cut down to as low as 6 CFS after the uh, October 28th, all the way through November. Between storms, the flows were reduced to 8 CFS. With my experience, I headed the team to construct and make it feasible with the current flows of 8 CFS to allow fish to move through here with the releases that are occurring within the area. To explain these two releases, one upstream of Alma Street and the other underneath the Willow Street, these two releases can happen twice a day and can send surge flows to the river system urging fish to move through these barrier structures.